Okay, starting off turn number three with Arjun. And things are not going very well for us, but we'll press on and see what we can do. So, the first thing, so the Wraith has one hit point knocked off of it, so I really want to take it down before it gets a chance to activate, because that thing is deadly. Uh, one problem, though, is that in order to get Arjun to explore, he needs to be on an unexplored edge, and unfortunately, the only unexplored edge available to him would be, like, and maintaining adjacency with the Wraith would be, would be right here. So, and the problem with that is that if he kills the Wraith while he's on the Wraith's tile, the Wraith has this Death Shriek ability, and when it dies, each hero on the tile takes one hit point of damage. And, and Arjun's already down to 2 HP. But the problem, I, I don't want to leave that Wraith around because it's far more deadly alive. So we're going to risk it, uh, well, not even risk, we're going we're gonna to have Arjun move over here, use his move action. Now he's going to attack the Wraith with uh, Tide of Iron, which gets a plus 8. He still needs to get a 7 to hit, but, uh, you know, a plus, a plus 8 is pretty good. So let's see, let's see if Arjun can hit the Wraith. And he got a 15, so yeah, 15 plus, plus that 8 is more than enough to take out the Wraith. So he hits the Wraith, the Wraith goes down, goes into our experience pile. Get rid of this token, put it over here. And take the Wraith off the board and put it over here. And hopefully we don't get another one of those anytime soon. But Arjun does take one hit point of damage from that Death Shriek, so that's very, very unfortunate. But I think overall it's probably worth getting that Death Shriek off the board, or getting that Wraith off the board. So he didn't need a token. He did move, he did attack, and for killing the Wraith he will get a treasure card. So let's draw a treasure card and see what we get. Hopefully it's something like hit points. Play this immediately, draw three treasure cards, and keep one, discard the others. Meh. So we put this away. We draw three treasure cards. One. I'll put that over there. Two. Put that over there. Three. Now we get to keep one of these and discard the other two. So let's see what we got. We got a potion of healing. That's probably the one we're going to keep. And we got that. That's no good. This is easy. We'll... Definitely discard this one. So it's between Potion of Healing and Heroic Stand. What's Heroic Stand do? Uh, until the end of your next hero phase, each hero gains a bonus to attack rolls. No, we're going to get rid of that. All right, so we're going to get the uh, Potion of Healing. And it says we can use this during our hero phase. I guess we're still technically in our hero phase because we're drawing treasure, so we're going to use this during our hero phase to regain two hit points, which we desperately need. So that is discarded, and Arjun gets back two hit points. So, Okay, so he is on an unexplored edge, so he will be exploring, so we will do that. So let's see what kind of tile Arjun gets. And this is the... Secret Stairwell from Adventure Number 1, but it uh, doesn't do us any good in this adventure. But it is a white tile. Now, Arjun doesn't have any treasure cards left, so he can't discard one to gain a power. But we had a white tile, so we do need to draw a monster, and there will be no encounter. But let's go ahead and draw that monster. And we get a spider. Probably my least favorite of the 1 HP monsters. They seem, seems like these are the strongest. They have really high attack with that plus 11, 15 HP. It's probably, probably between these two as far as which one is the strongest. Anyway, we'll place the spider down on the bone pile and update. So this turn he drew a spider, so spy. No conditions, no encounter, 
So now his monster will activate, so he's going to activate the ghoul and then the spider. Alright, so ghoul activates. If it is adjacent, it is. So it attacks with a bite, so it's get plus 9. It gets plus 9 on that. So it's going to attack Alyssa with a plus 9, and if it hits, it's going to do 3 damage. Hmm, maybe this one's slightly more powerful than that one. Actually, I'd probably say, yeah, that's probably the most powerful of the 1 HP monsters. So it's going to be a plus 9. So we need to roll really low. 9 plus 7 is 16, which is enough to hit Alyssa. Yikes. So she's going to go down to one hit point. And the bite doesn't immobilize her or anything. Okay, so now the spider's going to go. If the spider's adjacent, it's not. If it's within one tile, it is. It will attack the closest here with an acidic web. So first of all, we're just going to roll the attack and then we'll worry about the other stuff. So it's going to attack Arjun with the plus 11. Wow. 17, we don't even have to check, that definitely hits. And the way the spider does this attack, we'll read it here in a second, but it pulls itself in with its web so that it's adjacent to the hero upon a hit. So it's going to do one damage, it slows down Arjun, and then yeah, we place the spider adjacent. So Arjun goes down to two hit points, and he is now slowed again. But that will be the end of his villain phase. But before we move on to Alyssa, let's go ahead and put a marker on Arjun just so we can see that and know that it's there. All right, so Alyssa, it's her turn. She has one hit point remaining, but the decision for what to do with her is pretty easy. She's adjacent to that ghoul. She has this wonderful ability called Careful Attack that just lets her automatically do one hit point of damage without even doing a roll. So it's a no-brainer. That's what she's going to do. Going to ping the, uh, the ghoul to take it down. So we're going to add this to our experience pile, which means we can cancel an encounter at this point, though she only has one hit point. So if she does cancel an encounter, she just automatically dies. So we take down the ghoul, put it over here, and now, yeah, we have to decide what we're going to do with, uh, with Alyssa. So, well, let's update our sheet while we're thinking about what we're going to do. So she did this. Um, she did attack. She does get treasure. So let's look at that first. Maybe she'll actually get some hit points or something. And use this when you would draw a treasure card. Okay, right. So this is pretty good um, if we live long enough to see its use. When you would draw a treasure card, you can skip drawing a treasure card and instead just gain a hit point. And I find that to be really useful in this game. Though again, it would be it would have been useful a couple turns ago when we still had some hit points, but because I think we're going to be dead before we can use it. So uh, let's see. So is she she has some options. She has all kinds of options for moving because she has a speed of six and she's not mobilizer slowed down so she can probably go to any unexplored edge um, I guess we'll go that way so the rules say you can go through uh, hero like allies but you can't go through monsters so what she can do is she can go one two three four to get over to this tile over here now and, and, and again with her scout all she has to do is be on this tile so actually what we'll have her do is move over here adjacent to the spider so that if, uh, if it comes down to it, she can use her like little ping attack thing to take down the spider. So she will go ahead and use Scout to explore that area over there. So Alyssa, she attacked, she moved, we already dealt with the treasure, she will now explore. So let's go ahead and draw a treasure, or draw a tile. It's a white tile. So technically she could use that treasure item she got to get a daily power, but I think that treasure item she got is worth more than any power that she would draw from her stuff but she does get a monster and it's gonna be a skeleton and these guys are no picnic either they've got a high AC and a pretty good attack 
So we take the skeleton and put it onto the bone pile. And let's go ahead and update for Alyssa. So she drew a white tile, she got a skull. Uh, she has no conditions, there was no encounter for that. So the skeleton will now activate. So if the skeleton is adjacent, it's not. If it's within a tile and it is, it'll move adjacent to the closest hero and attack with the charging slice. So it's going to move bone pile to bone pile and attack Alyssa. Now if it misses, it misses, so that's good. But if it hits, Alyssa will go down. And it has a plus nine. So let's hope it gets a five or lower. And that's not a five or lower, that's a 16. So that's more than enough to hit Alyssa even without the plus nine. So Alyssa falls. RIP Alyssa. So she goes down to zero. And that is the end of her uh, villain phase. So that's going to mark the end of turn number three. So we'll come back in turn number four and see if we can do anything in this adventure, but I think it's lost.